With iOS 17 and macOS Sonoma, Apple introduced a new version of the Object Capture API. Object Capture is Apple's very own photogrammetry solution that lets users scan real-world objects. The first version of the API was quite impressive. It was fast and could capture an incredible amount of detail. The new version improves on the features of the first one and adds several more, with the most important one being the ability to complete a scan right on your iPhone. Let's see things in more detail. Version 2 of the API is quite new, so most of the applications are still in the process of implementing it. So currently, it's not as easy to test out. But as is always the case, there is a workaround. Apple has created a demo app as a showcase on how to work with the API. So for now, we can just download and use that. You'll find the link in the description below. The only caveat with this demo app is that in order for us to run it, we have to jump through a couple of hoops. We need to use Xcode and also enable developer mode on the iPhone or iPad. Don't worry though, the process is super simple. Once you connect your phone to the computer and load up the demo app on Xcode, you're pretty much set. The only thing you have to do is hit the play button on Xcode's interface. Then you will be guided through the whole setup process. Xcode has a very helpful wizard that basically holds your hand all the way through. So even if you stumble on a specific step, it'll describe exactly what you need to do to resolve the issue. I have zero experience with Xcode and I was able to add the app on my iPhone in just a couple of minutes. So let's see what kind of results we can get out of the on-device processing. Even though the API is extremely capable overall, when the reconstruction happens on the phone, there are some limits at play. So in this scenario, we can only output the lowest quality the API offers. That means that the mesh is going to be decimated to the lowest possible poly count. The 3D models we get out of this process are meant for phone and tablet use, just something that will give us a rough idea about the object's properties. The on-device processing is not meant for high-quality asset creation, but still, it has a lot of benefits. Let's say, for example, that you're in a store and you're shopping for a cool piece of furniture for your living room. You can quickly scan it with your phone, process it, and then just send it to your partner over a simple message. Since the scanning process uses not only photo data but also LiDAR, the 3D model, when it comes to dimensions, is going to be very accurate. So your partner can quickly preview it on the real-world living room and see how it looks with all the other furniture in place. And they can even take a quick snapshot to show you how everything looks. And because the iPhone has all these AR features built in, everything works seamlessly. The virtual object will blend in with all the other objects in the space. So a real object will occlude parts of the virtual object. It's quite fascinating to see, especially considering the fact that the iPhone produces all these depth maps in real time. For me, this is a killer use case. You might not get the highest quality possible, but it's good enough for this type of scenario. Will you look <laughs> like an idiot when you're scanning a piece of furniture in the middle of a public space? <laughs> Absolutely, but at least the process doesn't take that long, so you will only look like an idiot for a short period of time. Most of the scans take around 3 to 4 minutes to shoot and around 5 to 6 minutes to process. All in all, the whole procedure from scanning to 3D model will take no more than 10 or 11 minutes. And I have the suspicion that this was a very deliberate decision. The app has a hard cap of 120 photos max, so the phone doesn't have to process an insane amount of data. The results won't blow you away, but it's still good enough for certain use cases. And another thing that's quite stunning to see is how accurate things are as far as sizing goes. Pretty much everything I scanned was extremely close to the real world object. You can see it quite clearly when I put the objects side by side. This is the benefit of having a LiDAR scanner on the device and also using that as part of the scanning process. But just to be extra sure that I'm not imagining things, I imported the objects into Cinema and measured them there as well. 
This real-world stool, for example, is 45.5 cm in height. And if we check the dimensions of the virtual object, it's very close to that. It's off just by a couple of millimeters. And the same goes for the chair. That is really cool to see. Even though the mesh quality is not the best, I don't really mind that. What I have a problem with, though, is the lighting variance in the texture. Of course, that's to be expected because there's no easy way to control the lighting without using more lights in your space. I could personally do that when scanning the objects, since I have all the necessary equipment, but it wouldn't really represent how the majority of the people would use this feature. 99.9% .9 will just use whatever lighting is available in their space. One way to circumvent that would be to allow the use of turntables. That way, people could just find an area with the best possible lighting, and then by turning the object around, they would ensure great lighting from all sides. Unfortunately, that is not supported in this mode. I tried it and the phone wouldn't even begin the scanning process. But of course, the API supports the turntable method when using a computer. It's just not available in this hybrid LiDAR slash photogrammetry mode. And this is where all the other modes of the API come into play. In total, the API offers five different settings. The raw version is the highest quality we can get and the one we basically need for asset creation. That's the one I use for all of my assets. This setting gives us the highest quality mesh we can get out of the API, and when it comes to textures, a diffuse map. And that's it. We're expected to generate our own normal roughness AO and displacement maps, which is exactly how artists would approach things. All the other settings below RAW give us a decimated mesh and some automatically generated maps, normal, roughness, AO, etc. These lower quality versions are perfect for quick evaluations and for sharing the file through email or messaging. The lowest setting gives us the smallest size possible. The model has a very low polygon count and the textures have a maximum size of 2K. This low res version comes with three textures, a diffuse, normal, and AO map. With version two of the API, we also get one more mode above raw. That mode allows us to customize things to our liking. So we can choose the amount of decimation we want, we can pick the texture resolution of the maps, and we can also change the file format and the type of maps to include. As you can see, the API is very, very flexible. If you want a quick and dirty result, you can do everything on your phone without even touching a computer. But if you want a high quality product, you can get that too, but you will have to use a computer and a more complex lighting setup. I would absolutely love to see all the mobile scanning apps actually copy Apple's polished UI and UX. The demo app does a great job guiding the user throughout the whole process. Once you point the phone to the object of interest, the app will automatically mark it in a bounding box. Usually it will do a very good job figuring out the boundaries of the object, but in case it's off, we can easily adjust things by hand. And then when the scanning process begins, we get a ton of feedback. It'll ask us to slow down if we're going too fast, it will nudge us when the object is out of frame, and it will also give us a great looking point cloud to interact with. There's even a very subtle soundtrack that gives us an extra level of feedback. If for some reason the app cannot get a good scan, the soundtrack will be interrupted. The app will even guide us through the proper photogrammetry technique. Once our first segment is done, it will tell us what we need to do next. If the object is not easily deformed, it will suggest to flip it around in order to capture all remaining sides. And in case the object is soft or has tricky reflections, it will tell us to capture the object from different angles, one from a low angle and one segment from a high angle. It's all incredibly well done and it's obvious that Apple wants regular people to use this feature, not just 3D artists. And I think that's a brilliant idea. We're going to interact with virtual objects a lot more in the future, so it makes sense to make the 3D asset creation as easy as possible. 
Another hint that Apple wants regular people to use the feature has to do with the way they use LiDAR and regular photography. A typical asset creation session involves a carefully controlled environment. Lights evenly illuminating the object, polarized lighting, etc. But regular people won't have access to this type of equipment. So Apple cleverly uses LiDAR when regular photography cannot cut it. For example, if there's a surface that lacks texture details, the API will rely mostly on LiDAR to figure out the surface. And for other areas that are more well-defined, it will rely on photography. So in the end, the user gets the best out of both worlds. In the future, I would love to see a more powerful LiDAR scanner being used and the ability to process higher detail models on device. That would be the dream, and I think that day will come. It's just a matter of time and cost. 3D scanning is a demanding process, so the hardware has to catch up. We're not there yet, but we're getting there. And I think that's about it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.